Coming up, the men's basketball team won against Calumet College in its exhibition game on Sunday. We have your highlights. Also, an exclusive interview with the women's basketball team's new head coach, Allison Guth. Later on, we've got coverage on the women's volleyball team and its historic first season in the Atlantic 10. I'm Julie West. And I'm William Bazone. This and so much more. Ramblers country, let's ride. RSL begins now. Welcome back to Rambler Sports Locker, and folks, this has been quite the week for our Rambler teams. That's right. The women's volleyball team made program history last weekend when it secured its 14th consecutive win, breaking the previous record of 13. And the same goes with our cross-country teams. Both the men and women ran into the winner's circle this past weekend, and they will keep on running into the postseason races. Now, it's no secret that behind every great team is a great coach, and that is exactly what the cross-country team has. Head coach Gavin Kennedy led the Ramblers to a team title its first year in the A-10 and recently received the recognition he deserves. Here's Samantha Martinez with the story. Gavin Kennedy, Loyola's director of cross country and track and field, was named cross country coach of the year on the 29th of October. The announcement comes after both men and women's cross country teams won two championships on October 29th. The cross country team is the first team at Loyola to win team titles after joining the Atlantic 10 Conference. This was Kennedy's second season at Loyola, marking an unforgettable season for the coach. In his first season with Loyola, Kennedy led the track and field team to personal bests, putting up outstanding numbers. Another win, another day. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Samantha Martinez. Thanks, Samantha. After graduating eight seniors and graduate students from last year's squad, the Loyola men's basketball team has some big shoes to fill with its new young core. In Sunday's exhibition game, freshman Jalen Quinn was featured in the starting lineup. Vanessa Hawks goes over his performance with another installment of New Blurs on the Block. Well, hello basketball season. The wait is over, it is officially here, and freshman Jalen Quinn is off to an incredible start. Happy November everyone and welcome to another segment of New Blurs on the Block. The Loyola men's basketball team played its first exhibition match against Calumet College on Sunday, October 30th. After shaking off its only preseason game, the Ramblers head into the regular season with confidence. The Ramblers earned a win in the exhibition match 82-57. The rookie guard out of Tuscola, Illinois led the pack with a game-high 20 points. In the press conference after the game, Quinn stated, quoting now, We've been working really hard, and being out there with the fans, students, there's a lot of good energy that came with it, unquote. I have a feeling this is not going to be the only time we'll be hearing about Quinn, with performances like these from a rookie, he's likely to make headlines once again, and it'll be exciting to see what the season has in store for him. To witness Quinn and the rest of his pack continue to take off, be sure to attend the first Loyola men's basketball game of the regular season Monday, November 7th at Gentile Arena. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. versus Fairleigh Dickinson. You can also tune in on NBC Sports Chicago Plus or at Rambler Sports Network Radio. To see and hear about more rookie ramblers like Quinn, be sure to tune in next time where I highlight another rookie rambler on new blurs on the block. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Vanessa Hoxa. Thanks, Vanessa. Speaking of new ramblers, the women's basketball team welcomes a new coach this season. Head coach Allison Guth brought her team to a win in its exhibition game on October 30th. Here is Andrea Barone with more. Loyola women's sports are going through many changes this season with the transition into the Atlantic 10 Conference and now a slightly new coaching staff. The Loyola women's basketball team welcomed its head coach Allison Guth on April 8th. Guth spent the last seven years in New Haven, Connecticut as the coach of the Yale University Bulldogs. In her tenure there, she led the team to an unprecedented 99 wins. Aside from her impact on the court, Guth helped her players shine in the classroom. Four of her Bulldogs teams received the NCAA Public Recognition Award for Outstanding Academic Progress Rates. Guth is a native of the Chicagoland area and attended Buffalo Grove High School, where she won the state title in the year 2000. Guth stayed close to her roots and went to the University of Illinois, where she played on the Fighting Illini's 2003 team that reached the NCAA tournament. Guth is no stranger to college sports. She served as the Northwestern Recruiting Coordinator and Assistant Coach in 2014. Guth was also the director of basketball relations at the Ramblers' rivals, the DePaul Blue Demons. 
Now Guth is finally back with the Ramblers, and this isn't her first time as a member of the coaching staff. Back in 2005, Guth served as assistant coach of the Loyola women's team, where she claims to have fallen in love with coaching basketball. After a victory over the Purdue University, the women's team's exhib exhibition match on October 13th, Guth shares she couldn't be happier to be back in Rogers Park. Rambler Nation. I mean, the fans, the feel when you step off the floor and you're giving a pound dog to Sister Jean when you come off the floor and you have a brotherhood that supports us like our sisterhood and the men support us with the double header. Um, it's really awesome. With Guth as coach and a fired up team already coming off a win, this season is sure to be the one to watch. Make sure to support Guth and the women's team Wednesday, November 16th at Genteel Arena where they'll take on the Virginia Cavaliers. Reporting for the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Andrea Veroni. Thanks, Drea. The sports world has been filled with quite a few controversial figures in recent years, and we have to ask ourselves, when is enough enough? We've got Mr. Lucas Kim and company weighing in on some athletes' recent actions in this week's edition of The Ramble. Hey team, and welcome back to The Ramble. I'm your host, Lucas Kim, here with Oliver Allen, Elizabeth Winchester, Nate Keogh, and Will McGrath. We're here with another segment today with this week's buzzing question that's got everyone in the sports world talking. Should athletes be using their platform to promote personal ideologies? This is an argument that's been going on for a long time. Athletes have come under the scrutiny for saying things that sometimes not everyone agrees with, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Colin Kaepernick, and most recently, Kyrie Irving. Today, there are aspects such as social media, which has made it easy for athletes to express their thoughts on issues going on throughout society. So I'd like to start off with you, Nate, and hear your take on this. Um, yeah, Lucas, it's definitely a, a tough topic. Um, I think athletes are entitled to their opinion. Everyone is entitled to have an opinion. However, I feel like some athletes just like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a matter of just education, but I feel like, I feel like sports is an escape for a lot of people mm -hmm. as well. And I feel like when you take that away and just bring in like a real world aspect in the sports game, sometimes it's just, it takes away from that, like, you know, like two and a half hour no, from escape that, from the from rest that of the environment. world. No, I totally understand. Absolutely. Elizabeth? I think that it's important to use their platform because they are gearing towards a lot of people that have not ever really come into like or don't have any other role models so using their platform for good is always important but i know there's a little bit of a line that n needs to be towed because while we're all entitled to our opinions we have to know the line that not all of them need to be shared because i think as long as you're promoting goodness and like the equality of all there's nothing really wrong but if it starts getting into mucky waters i think that's just knowing when to draw that line is important so like use your platform for good and I think I want to leave it at that. Totally. I mean, at the end of the day, they're people and they should have the same access and rights to social media. They can say what they want, yada, yada. And I mean, they're going to say some things that maybe shouldn't be said. I know, I think it was two years ago, Deshaun Jackson made some pretty anti-Semitic comments. So just because they can express their opinion doesn't mean that they should be free from experiencing consequences for the words that they say. And in addition to that, they should understand as athletes, they have a lot of people following them, a lot of young kids looking up to them as role models, that what they say can seriously affect people and their views on certain issues in the world. So they just need to take into account that what they say is gonna be a lot more amplified than what a lot of other people would say. Interesting take. Yeah, so my personal opinion is that obviously, you know, this topic is a very touchy subject because Whenever an athlete decides to step into this type of um, situation, you know, you're going to alienate a certain part of the American society, but you're also going to be loved by another part of American society. So, for example, you mentioned before with Colin Kaepernick. You know, Colin Kaepernick, obviously, if you are on his side of the argument, you think, oh, yeah, you know, that's great. You're protesting police brutality and that sort of stuff. But if you're on the other side, you think, oh, you know, you're disrespecting the flag and the military and stuff like that. So I guess athletes, you know, they obviously have the right to go in, you know, and speak, you know, what they personally believe in. But I think it's important for them to have the aspect of, you know, you're going to be praised by a certain, certain people, but you're also going to be criticized by other people. Interesting. Now, a follow-up question for everyone. 
Should athletes still speak on a subject that they're not knowledgeable of? I mean, I think a question is, should anyone speak on a subject that they're not knowledgeable of? And I think especially if you're an athlete and you have a very large fan base and a large following, you need to understand that a lot of people will see them, post something on their story and be like, man, he makes a good point. I'm just going to believe that. And I think that's the case for a lot of people when they see stuff on social media. And when an athlete has such a large following, they're going to post that. And a lot of people are going to see that and just take that for granted. So I think they need to understand that what they say, a lot of people are going to take for granted because they're pretty influential people. I mean, a lot of people look up to them. They have large followings. So they just need to realize that what they post is going to make a difference. So they need to make sure that what they post is accurate just for the greater good of anyone that sees it. I kind of want to echo that because I think that you really shouldn't speak on something that you're not knowledgeable because while you do have a big fan base, you need to take that in consideration. And as you said, Oliver, like we can't just be saying whatever we want. You're entitled to your opinion, but like when it comes to situations that require more care and knowledge, don't talk on them unless you've done your due diligence and you can actively cite your sources. Mm -hmm. And that's for anything out there, right? Like whatever side of the debate you're on, as long as you can back yourself up with facts, that's one thing. But if you're just bouting off the cuff, then I would refrain from, yeah. so, refrain from because you do have a bigger following and you need to be careful that they're gonna take your opinion mm -hmm. as fact mm -hmm. because that's how they view you. You're up on a pedestal for these athletes, they're up on pedestals and they need to be knowledgeable that they need to be careful no, yeah. what they say. Yeah, I totally understand. Well, thanks for everyone's input on this topic. It's one that's definitely still developing and will continue to grow as more social media sites come to light. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll pass it back to Julian William at the Anchor Desk. Thanks, everyone. Now let's take a look back at this week's matchups. The women's volleyball team claimed its 13th and 14th straight win last weekend against Virginia Commonwealth. Here's Vanessa Hoxa with the highlights from Friday's game. The Loyola women's volleyball team came into this match hot. The team earned their 13th consecutive win against the VCU Rams, matching the longest winning streak in program history. The fans were definitely excited to see the performance the Ramblers served, pun intended. The Ramblers got familiar with the opponent in the first set, and the Rams brought the competition. The Rams defense didn't allow for many open spots on the court at first, in which the Ramblers struggled to put the ball down. The Ramblers dug out of a hole when junior libero, Grace Hitchman, got behind the service line with the Rams leading 20 to 17. Hitchman was a hot server and no icing could cool her down. The Rams called a timeout at 20 all, but all that resulted in was a killer ace by Hitchman. Hitchman served eight serves in a row, guiding the Ramblers to win the first set 25 to 20. Hitchman yelled swing high to junior outside hitter Addie Barnes in the second set and that's exactly what she and the Ramblers did going into the second set. The fans saw some amazing offense from the Ramblers. Sophomore setter Bree Borum ended a rally with a sneaky setter dump not long after followed by a killer back row attack from Barnes. Ramblers won the second set 25-18. to 18. I caught up with a Rambler fan, sophomore Finn Russell, where I asked what her favorite thing about this team was. Um, I love how passionate they are about like issues that are important. The Ramblers took the third set by the biggest lead out of all the sets, 25-13. to 13. In the press conference after the game, head coach Amanda Berkeley spoke on the focus of her team and the confidence in this match. Um, we knew that VCU was going to provide a challenge, and they did in that first set. And I think, you know, at first we were a little bit, like, nervous, and then we kind of settled in, and I thought we did a really nice job of closing out the, the set and doing a nice job in, the, in that match. The Ramblers return right here at Gentile Arena tomorrow on October 29th at 5 p.m. to face the VCU Rams once again and fight for their 14th win in a row. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Vanessa Hoxa. Thanks, Vanessa. The men's and women's cross-country teams had a strong showing at the Atlantic 10 Championship in Mechanicsville, Virginia. The Ramblers edged out preseason favorites LaSalle University to capture the title. Not only is it Loyola's first official championship in the new conference, but they are also the first set of Rambler teams to win both conference titles in 10 years. Both the men's and women's basketball teams are off to a great start after winning their exhibition games on October 30th. The women's defeated Purdue Northwest 73-65. The team is traveling to Kalamazoo, Michigan Monday for their next matchup against the Western Michigan Broncos. 
The men's team beat Calumet College 82-57 to and tip off against Fairleigh Dickinson next Monday at Gentile Arena. And Julie, you were at the game. Give us some of your, uh, your biggest takeaways from it. Well, William, they had a great start. They had some great moments throughout the game, but it is a young team and they need to work on their chemistry. After losing most of its starters, Braden Norris is really the only seasoned vet. And I know that Marquise Kennedy is hoping to lead the charge too, but it's like we're watching an entirely new team. I couldn't agree more with you there. And it's great to see faces like Jalen Quinn and Philip Alston step up and really prove their worth to head coach Drew Valentine. And we'll turn it over to executive producer Gabby Luma for the recap. The Loyola Ramblers won their exhibition game against Calumet College on October 30th. The game marks the team's first game in Gentile Arena for the 2022 and 2023 season. Loyola began the game with an almost entirely new lineup, with redshirt senior guard Braden Norris the only returner. The lineup also featured junior forward Philip Alston, who had a standout first half performance. With the first six points of the game, two of his first baskets as a Rambler were dunks. Junior center Jacob Hudson, part of the starting lineup, put up an almost immediate four rebounds in the first five minutes. Hudson wasn't the only one excelling on defense throughout the half, as the team totaled 34 by the end of the first. Alston and Hudson led with 10 and 9 each. Norris, last year's leader in three-point shots, went one and three on three-point attempts in the first half. Norris played just over 16 minutes in the first, contributing a team-high five assists. Calumet College picked up 15 fouls during the first half, sending Loyola to the line eight different times, resulting in 18 points for the Ramblers off of free throws alone. Senior forward Tom Welch led Loyola with five points off free throws. Ultimately, the Ramblers led the first half dominantly, with a solid performance on both ends of the court. The second half started slowly on offense for the Ramblers, not scoring for the first three minutes, allowing Calumet to score three times. Loyola didn't score again for another two minutes until a three-point jumper from Norris broke the drought. From then on, the game was in Loyola's hands. Alston recorded his fifth dunk of the night, sparking a rowdy crowd reaction and visibly giving the players more energy halfway through the second half. Towards the end of the game, Loyola subbed in almost all freshmen to get some minutes and experience playing in Gentile. Each player just played over three minutes. Though the Ramblers won, Loyola head coach Drew Valentine expressed his disappointment in his team's performance, saying he expected more from his players. Yeah, we got to start uh, just approaching adversity better, and we have to fight through adversity better. Alston and freshman guard Jalen Quinn said it was great to play in Gentile Arena for the first time, but they know they have to be better and are focused on continuing to improve in the coming days and weeks before the team's first regular season game. Yeah, uh, coach just talked about um, trying to be like overachievers. Um, you know, in practice we work, we work really hard. Um, and he just talked about a whole bunch of little things that we can control. Um, so when we get to practice, just got to improve on those little things. It's really just the little things, obviously, what you said, like a win's a win, but it's just the way that we won, because obviously we're a lot more talented than the team, so just, uh... The Ramblers begin their regular season on November 7th against Farley Dickinson University. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m., and the broadcast information has yet to be announced. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm executive producer Gabby Luma. That wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Loyola RSL and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Julie West. And I'm William Bazone. We'll see you all next week with a brand new show. And don't forget to turn out the lights.